Alex, we've seen this Astro scandal kind of mm. develop as the days go by, and there seems to be a few new pieces of evidence that have been brought to light. Have you heard about these? So I, I'm very active on social media, and in on social media, a lot of the non-Astro fans, obviously, are talking about this. You know, I haven't heard from any Astros fans in a very long time. I think they are almost like under a rock like Patrick Starr from Spongebob. They don't want to reveal themselves. And it's funny because, yes, being up here in New England where these stories sometimes happen. Yes, I'm talking about the Patriots in, in this sense. I'm not saying that the Patriots are cheaters, but I'm saying these type of stories usually pop up here in New England. And now it ha- have it happening down in Houston is something a little bit different. And this is the first time we've truly seen technology come into effect at this scale in baseball. And to that point, the MLB instructed video monitors last year. I don't know if you've heard about this. They actually instructed the video monitors working at Minute Maid to listen for the banging sounds that were coming from dugouts, Mm -hmm. which sort of implies that they had their eye on the Astros from last year, and they had at least a somewhat of maybe some foul play going on, which is an interesting development in this story that this isn't anything new to the MLB that they've been tracking this and keeping an eye on it for at least early in the 2019 seasons for at least a year. Well, that's the thing, and we're going to talk about this with Nancy Newman later on in the show about what the punishment should be. I know we talked a little about this, and then we ran out of time last Thursday, the last time you were in the studio, Chaz. Again, you're a baseball player. You've been playing your whole life. Do you feel like it makes sense, or what punishment do you feel like makes the most sense for the Astros in this case? And I sort of talked about it last week. You can't really take away any accolades that they had during the 2017 season because you can't really give it to anyone else. So the MVP season for Altuve, I know a lot of Yankee fans, probably including yourself, thought Judge may have been robbed back in 2017 during that season for MVP. Mm. And a lot of Yankee fans are now irate that Jose Altuve may have been cheating for his entire MVP season. (laughs) But that being said, I don't think you can take away that or you can take away the World Series championship and give it to anyone else because they haven't earned it themselves. That being said, the punishment should be harsh just because this is a pretty big offense as far as baseball goes and as far as cheating scandals have gone. This is one of the larger scandals we've seen in quite some time. So there's definitely going to be some suspensions, definitely going to be maybe some some players that aren't going to see a lot of playing time and in the 2020 season coming up. Oh, players. Might. You think players are going to get suspended? And that all depends on the involvement and how much they find in this scandal as far as who knew, who knew how much, who was involved, who wasn't involved, etc. So it comes down to after this whole research and, and development comes out, it comes down to how much they find out, and that's kind of going to decide what the punishment is for the entire team. You know, we talked about this with Nancy Newman as well. Three of the key pieces of the 2017 Astros team are now current managers in the game of baseball today. A.J. Hinch, Houston Astros, obviously. Alex Cora, who used to be a coach with the Houston Astros, now is a manager for the Boston Red Sox. And then the player, Carlos Beltran, now the manager for the New York Mets. Now all three are active baseball managers do you feel like the MLB just needs to stick with A.J. Hinge and whoever else, or do you feel like they need to really look at the managers that are in the game today, like Alex Cora and like Carlos Beltran, that were a part of that 2017 Astros team? I'd like to say no, but I feel like that isn't fair to players like Mike Fears, who actually came out and reported this story, who was part of that team and left the team and did his due diligence by reporting this to the MLB. So, again, like I said, it, it comes down to how much everyone was involved in it. But if it comes out that Alex Cora and Carlos Beltran were playing a big role in this and had a vast knowledge of what was going on, I don't think it's fair for them to participate in it and help within 2017, leave the team, and then just get off completely scot-free.
it's kind of funny, Chaz, because it's it's all coming out of time where at this time of year we don't normally talk about baseball, and um, it's definitely really taken over the whole sports media, the whole news in the sports world, and it's kind of overcasting the free agency market of baseball again. You know, this is the second year in a row or maybe even the third year in a row where the free agency market in the baseball world is not driving the talk. And Yuri Gurriel just got signed by the Astros for one year, $8 million yesterday. But no one's talking about that because everyone's so focused in on the fact that the Astros and who knows who else in the MLB is involved. I think it's I'm going to say this and I feel like a lot of people are going to agree with me to say that the Houston Astros are the only team that use technology to steal signs is baloney. I think there if one team is doing it and one team did it, you're going to tell me 29 other teams did not either try it or are doing it now. Come on now. They are the only team that's gotten caught, obviously. Exactly. So you can't exactly put the blame on any other teams, but I would have to agree with you in saying that there is a pretty solid chance and pretty likely chance. Barry that, Bonds was the only one doing steroids. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot of cheating going on, and there has been through not even just baseball, through any sport, through any activity, really. It's human nature to want to get a leg up on the competition any way you can, and especially at such a high level. So I'm sure Pete Rhodes not, wasn't the only one betting on sports either. Let me tell you. Okay. Whether or not. Again, it's all about who gets caught. It's not cheating until you get caught. But <laughs> once you get caught, obviously. Yeah. And then you're cheating. Are harsh. Yes. Then it's cheating. Yeah. So now how does the MLB, you know, this can't just be a slap on the wrist. It can't because now the 29 other teams that probably tested the waters and stealing signs with technology or doing something else in the in the world of, of cheating without being per se caught. Now, how are the MLB going to imply or change the rules to make it more clear you cannot do this because X, Y, and Z? Well, assuming that there are other teams that have been, like you said, testing the waters with sort of sign stealing or even anything as far as cheating with technology, this is a crucial punishment for the MLB to sort of set a precedent for the other teams if they are in the midst of trying stuff like that to sort of nix that and cut that right in the bud before it develops into something bigger and it sort of grows into a nationwide and a, and a league-wide epidemic. So, like you said, it can't be a slap on the wrist. They have to be harsh with the punishment but they have to be fair enough to the point that MLB still sort of stays balanced and they're still good and friendly competition within the league. I feel like this is going to be one of the most difficult tasks that the MLB is going to have to deal with in this time in baseball because this is also the time where, you know, this I didn't even put this in the top five news headlines, but Commissioner Rob Manfred wants to cut the grassroots of baseball. I don't know if you saw this or not, but he's looking to cut over 40 minor league baseball teams. And that's removing close to 350 players for each organization. And this is, there's there's proof out there saying that if this actually goes through, there's going to be over billions of dollars in revenue lost. And this is also coming at the same time that baseball is juggling the bad PR of the Astros sign stealing with technology. Also, let's not, you know, talk about the point where potentially we could be in another year where players are sitting out and that there is another kind of gridlock with contracts as well. Um, And so baseball has some large issues at hand. And then also the main category is that it's losing young fans. <laughs> so baseball has a lot of issues right now. Now, every sport has their own issues. If you look at the NFL with concussions and the NBA, I think they finally got back to true competition and the NHL is on a whole nother point. So every single sport has its own issues, but it seems like the baseball issues are more, larger at a larger scale than any other sport. 
and even past the baseball season, like you said, baseball season's ended, baseball is still in the discussions, everyone's talking about it with this big scandal, sort of overshadowing even free agency signings in the MLB right now. And I don't know if I agree with cutting the minor league teams just because I know a lot of minor league teams that are pretty crucial to developing some of the young players and in the double A AA and triple A bowl and getting drafted. Obviously you have to go through the farm leagues before you get called up. I feel like taking you said forty teams out, that's gonna be a pretty huge change and like you said, lose a lot of revenue for them. Do you know what kind of upside he was hoping to get with that? Or is it I think just trying to minimize the markets for there not to be as much saturation but at the end of the day Chaz I mean if you didn't start playing baseball as a kid would you be a fan today I think that's exactly true I mean I've been playing baseball like you said for all my life baseball was the first sport that I started playing and I haven't really looked back since then I've been a huge baseball fan I watch baseball I play baseball you know baseball is kind of you know my life revolves around baseball Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, if it wasn't thing. for baseball, I mean, the chances of you coming to Dean is even smaller because you play baseball here. So, again, sports drive markets in a way. And sports is a multi-trillion dollar industry of the world. And baseball, again, has a strong legacy, particularly in this country because it is America's pastime. Um, and, again, with lacrosse now coming up uh, through you know the the this generation in the youth now kids are starting to pick up football basketball soccer and lacrosse more than baseball i mean it's so much more difficult to find little league teams today than it was 10 years ago and then 20 years ago and 30 years ago so where is this going um, that's why you know the MLB and the Boys and Girls Club have such a large partnership is to drive baseball to the youth because that's their next generation. This is our next generation. This is why MLB and the baseball minds that are in the marketing room, that's why they're marketing to non-baseball fans and almost leaving the true baseball fans in the dark. I think there's pros and cons to that. Well, there's pros and cons to anything. But as soon as you start marketing to non-baseball fans, you start to lose the baseball fans. A lot of baseball fans I grew up loving the game don't watch it today. So you have to find that happy medium where you can, A, still love the game you grew up with, and B, find the new fans that have the same passion that you have had throughout all the years watching the game. And that balance is something that's really hard to find, and obviously he's struggling to find because he... Like you said, the Little League is kind of on the down low. Um, There's definitely a lot less kids playing baseball than there were even when I was a kid. You know, all my friends, you played Little League when you were younger. Everyone at least started at Little League. They maybe branched off to other sports, didn't like it, what have you. But everyone always played Little League as a kid. I don't know if I can say that that's the same story for kids nowadays. And trying to find that balance and trying to restore baseball in getting non-baseball fans' attention while trying to keep true baseball fans' attention is a fine line, and it's something that's really hard to balance, and Manfred is really going to have to think hard about how he's going to try and find that balance and, and find equilibrium once again to get more fans back to baseball. Well, lots of stuff to talk about on the show today. Coming up next, top five news headlines of the day, plus Nick Carlson, our tweeting and posting on Facebook all throughout the show this morning. So be sure to go on to Twitter at The Alex View Show and then on Facebook at The Alex View Show to comment and respond to the tweets. So coming up next, top five news headlines of the day here on Power 88.